very much for joining me again. So we're going to speak about Jamari Clark. And why am I speaking, up, speaking about Jamari Clark? So yesterday, Jamari Clark has um, scored his first goal in the colours, um, <laughs> black, green and gold. Um, but most no, most definitely, I did saw something, um, some impressive movement, some some stuff. I did see some stuff about the player, and I'm going to discuss those stuff. Um, I did give give a a, a a small breakdown of the game that they played. They played yesterday, the friend, the, the practice game against Albaview, in which they lost the game. But there are many factors to that. So for the first half, Jamar Clark played the first half. So I want to just give a a small tactical breakdown on the player, how to basically get the best out of this player he has some attributes he has some qualities that he purchased on the pitch which was phenomenal i think and most definitely i want to discuss that but before i get into that i would really really appreciate it if you guys smash a like button and most definitely hit that subscribe button now let's get on to the show nevertheless what i'm going to say here there's no way no one at all in the world of football don't know this if you have never seen him played if you, have, you don't know anything about him, this is new to you. But if you are a coach, if you are a scout, if you are, um, if you are one of the teams that are going to be playing against Jamaica, you must have done your homework. So I'm not saying anything here that is new and that is surprising to anyone. Unless you haven't seen him play before and many people are talking about, oh, I've seen him play at this and that. Oh, so what I do, I know people come in the comment, se comment section that you cannot highlight these tactical things and uh, listen to me. <laughs> I'm highlighting things that the world would have already seen with Jamar Clark playing at Reddings. So I'm highlighting now because I saw it with my own eyes. And I'm going to say this is basically the best way how to get or the best way to get the best out of this player in particular. So first, let's get this off first. First one is that Jamar Clark is not a runner. He's not a runner. He's not the running type of striker who is going to run in behind. No, he is a target man. Stands in between the center, the center, the center back, center back period, or even the sweeper, whichever center back is, 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 is commanding. That's the one he targets. He targets the one that is commanding. Anyways, he's a physical specimen. He engages in battle. He loves to engage in battles. He wins a lot of aerial duels. He wins a lot of of aerial dues and he goes into challenge 100 percent no half half half-hearted nothing he goes into challenge so he's going to win the ball it's technically good technical supreme his first touch is quite his quality no secondly most importantly his ability to hold up the ball is phenomenal his ability to hold up the ball is phenomenal that that um you know that that it, He's like a, how would I put it now? He's like a Lewandowski type player. I wouldn't say Mikel Antonio, Mikel Antonio brings something different. I would say he's a Lewandowski type um, player where he would hold up the ball, join in the central midfielders, but most importantly, um, actually, um, most importantly, get engaged with the attacking, with the wingers, the wing, the left winger or right winger. He's very much engaged with either wingers. So, Key factor, key points to note, you need pacey wingers when you're playing with them because he will hold the ball up and play it in the channel. You need players to get there. You need players to get there. Now let's get to the tactical board. We're going to get to the tactical board, people. I'm going to show you something, right? So this is what I saw. So this here is Jamar Clark in the number one. <clears throat> so you have the two defenders, the two centre-back pair, who are actually work. They were commanding, let's be honest. They were commanding. Full box, as Arborview normally does, they play a bit high. Um, <clears throat> they play a bit high. Yeah, that's staples and that. Uh, um, they play a bit high. So this is what the full box does, and they tuck in close to him. But what he what he does is, when when the ball is out of position, what normal striker would do. They have many other strikers. They would actually try to exploit these wide areas. So that is the reason why I know that he's not the type of striker who is a runner who, who loves to run behind. Not saying that he's slow. He's technically good, but he wants to take on his, his defenders. He wants to take on his defenders. So, he sticks here. Now, this is what happened. So, this, this, let's look at this as one of the wingers. Let's say Devante Campbell, Jamari Clark. Um, then now, uh, let's say this one here is Kamali Powell. or Could be one of them. Or even Tyler Roberts. 
who's quite pacey. This is what happened. So this is what this is how the ball does. So one one winger who plays quite um the left left back plays quite high, even staple as well. Let's let's say staple. So this is what I saw. The ball will play long. It doesn't matter how how high or what whatever the ball will play long, he will take it. He will be engaged and and, and take the ball. This defender would actually drop off the cover. What that normally does is it opens these wide channels. And it normally does well in playing off the ball in the wide channel. Now, this here is what I find intriguing. This is where his pace would have come to light. This is where his pace would have come to light because he is quite quick. Despite his physical specimen, he is quite quick and he is very good aerially. Whenever he receives the ball inside the 18 hour box, either via aerial, via cross, or to his feet, he is technically sound. And he normally gets off a shot. Just the same as how he scored the other goal that he scored. Let's show the goal that he scored. So this is Kobe. Kobe intercepts the ball right here. So Jamar, Jamar is right here. Kobe, Jam, this is where Jamar starts off. And Kobe, the, 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 the defenders are here. The defenders are here. These are where the defenders are. And this player would pass the ball. So Kobe would... Kobe would intercept the ball, intercept the ball right here. Kobe picks up the ball and he drives with the ball. What this is what Jamar Clark does. Jamar Clark, he would make this is what he does. And he peels off the right side of the centre back. Kobe would have gone to this side. That is um, Kobe Thomas. And play the ball onto Jamar Clark, where Jamar Clark would have and this defender would have come would have come across slightly to cover, but Jamar Clark he dribbles a little to his right, looks to the far post, defenders trying to cover, looks to the far post and then slot it in to the near post, and and by the time the keepers already dressing to already shaping his body to the far post. So inside of the 18 yard box, yes, he is that lethal. He's that lethal and he thinks ahead of the game. He really thinks ahead of the game. So, but well, nevertheless, the, the whole point that I'm saying is this. Jamar Clark is actually the type of striker who would be a target man. He needs two pacey runners, two pacey wingers um, alongside him and the, um, midfielders who will play that ball either in behind the channel, not the wide channels, the, the channel in between both um, center backs, but not the wide channel. He wants the wide channel to be occupied by his wingers where he can actually go and be the supported element either by the finisher inside of the 18 yard box or he would have, um, as, as you see, peeled off and allowed the, the midfielder to act, um, access the central zone. So, that is what I saw from Jamar Clark. I was going to give you guys a, a, a tactical insight, a tactical breakdown. Um, nevertheless, that is how I saw him score his goal. That is how I saw him play. I can be wrong. Um, I can most definitely be wrong, but um, that's what I saw from the first the first game. So I would be keen on seeing seeing him going further and get a better understanding of how he plays. As I said, this that I'm saying right here is nothing new. Any scout right across the world would have seen this, owing to the fact that he has played significant amount of games in the championship for Reading. So this is what I'm saying is nothing new. I'm just saying it because I want to say <laughs> I want to say this is what I saw. This is what I saw from him. And I can be wrong. I can most definitely be wrong. But this is what I saw. And going further, I will, will, will be looking for confirmation if I'm wrong or I am right. So, most definitely, that is what I saw. Jamar Clark RC needs two pacey wingers and, and midfielders who are actually fast on the ball, who can get the ball to him as quick as possible, which is essential in the build-up play. And he's that type of player. Very intelligent striker. He's a, a very good number nine. And funny enough, he's actually... Um, taller than Mikel Antonio <laughs> because I am um, Mikel. I think me, uh, Mikel Antonio and I are on the same height. Yeah, I think maybe I'm a little bit taller, maybe a, a few centimeters. But Jamar Clark is huge. He's huge, about six foot two, and built. So he will cause a lot of defenders problem, and he's a powerhouse. Anyways, massive respect, people. Thank you very much for tuning in. Until next time, guys, if you like the video, please smash the like button and most definitely hit that subscribe button if you're here for the first time. Until next time, Military Guna TV, we are out. Boom.